Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am offering Maksuda Khanum to start the hosting. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Only humans make waste that nature can't digest. The amount of plastic in the ocean just keeps growing. And if things don't change by 2025, the oceans will contain one metric tons of plastic for every three metric tons of fish. And by 2050, plastic will outweigh fish entirely. One lakh million creatures a year die from plastic entanglement. And approximately one million seabirds also die from plastic. A plastic bag can kill numerous animals because they take so long to disintegrate. So we need to aware about these pollutions and we need to know how to control these pollutions today and now. Actually, two types of pollutions occur, land-based and ocean-based. This land-based pollution creates more and more harm than ocean-based pollution. Well, Assalamu alaikum, I am Maksuda Khanu from Octofin and today is the third day of our online life course. Here we'll know about land-based marine pollution control in Bangladesh and legal analysis for implementation. I am very much pleased to introduce you Dr. MD Wahidul Alam. He is an associate professor of Department of Oceanography, Faculty of Marine Science and Fisheries, University of Chittagong, Bangladesh. He completed BSc and MSc in Marine Science from University of Chittagong and awarded doctor's degree from the School of Law, Ocean University of China, which is about Marine Environmental and Resources Protection Law. His research area is marine pollution, microbial pollution, marine environmental protection, ocean law, etc. He published 13 articles and one book in different journals and publishers. Dear participants, if you have any question during the session about the lecture, you can ask us in the chat box. We will try to answer. And if you are seeing the recorded file, you can comment in the comment section. Please enjoy the lecture. That's me at the end of my talk. So I will now hand over to Mr. Alum. Please, sir. Well, sir, you have to unmute first. You have to un unmute first. Sir, please unmute and share your screen. It's okay now? Yes, that's good. Okay. So, welcome to all participants from my end uh, for enjoying third lectures. As you know, Octopin Scientific Society and Blue Green Foundation and jointly organized this online lecture. The theme of the Octopin lecture series for the season is entitled Exploring Ocean, Explore the Planet Earth. The first day you are getting knowledge about the introduction of ocean and importance, importance of ocean education, where you get very enriched materials from Professor Dr. Muslimuddin Munna, Chairman of the Oceanography Department, University of Chittagong. The second day, you are enjoyed very excellent delivery about marine life system and harvesting the ocean resources from Javir and Russell. So, to know about the ocean and their resources, it is important for exploring ocean about, but management of ocean is also important for sustainable development of ocean and their resources. For this, today, 
the lecture is designed about the protecting the marine environment from land based marine pollution the title of my lecture the title of my lecture is designed about the land based marine pollution control in bangladesh a legal analysis for implementation everything is okay now skin is sharing yes okay so let's introduce again myself uh, shortly i am m d wahidul alam i have awarded my phd from ocean university of china about environmental and resource protection law and i have completed my bsc honors msc from marine science university of chittagong bangladesh and presently i am serving as a associate professor at department of oceanography university of chittagong let's start my lecture the outline of my lecture i am just uh, uh, i just make my lecture uh, like the introducing introducing about the marine environment marine pollution land based marine pollution etc and my second section is the examining the weakness of national law in the bangladesh uh, region and uh, in my third section i will discuss about the analysis of international regulations and in the fourth section i will analyze the i will try to discuss about the regional framework and finally i will give them some approach how to implement or how the implement system through legal basis so everybody we know the what is main environment main environment is a vital diversity of marine biota and it is called the lungs of the earth it is a natural cultural heritage it produces the 70% oxygen which is a vast resource reserves from human kind place of tourism mineral extraction transportation and recreation blessed with waters 72% water is blessed by ocean and coral reefs island mangrove forest ports and harbors etc which you getting the details the second lecture and first lecture about the marine environment ocean environment ocean resource etc i just just shortly brief now i just go to the bangladesh maritime area bangladesh is a very populated country and the largest deltas in the world due to the ganga banputra magna river system and bangladesh is also a very important hub in the bay of bengal due to the uh, bay of bengal has some potentiality and everybody we know that uh, in 2014 uh, bangladesh uh, got an uh, uh, independent maritime boundary from india and in 2012 bangladesh getting a, a independent uh, ocean delimitation occurs through under Uh, bangladesh and uh, myanmar uh, border so at last bangladesh uh, independent maritime area is 1 lakh 18800 tartan square kilometer which is uh, nearly same our land area whereas our land area is 1 lakh 47570 kilometers so our maritime area our main environment is very important for us and bangladesh has, has a, a small uh, Uh, coastline uh, and but it's the largest coastline unbroken coastline 710 kilometers and bangladesh uh, to protect the main environment department of shipping department of environment navy and port administration are responsible for protection conservation of our main environment so i just give a brief about the though there are lots of foreign participants here i just give a brief about our main environment the main environment of bangladesh is enriched with marine resources including good stocks of fishes the country also has an excellent marine heritages and have an interest in blue economy you know the blue economy the first lecture professor munna brief about the blue economy ocean economy And, uh, and and their importance so the many resources of the bay of bengal have the potential prospects to contribute the global ocean economy by conserving and protecting the 
postal and main environment. As main environment has diverse importance, so prevention and control of main pollution in, is significantly important and they are interlinked. A very big uh, environmentalist, Roh Ji, he said, protection of the main environment generally considered as protection from main pollution. So let's we know what is marine pollution. Marine pollution, we know everybody, marine pollution is a very common term in almost all the countries and has devastating impacts on both land and sea according to in both land and sea. According to GISAM, GISAM is a group of experts of marine protection. There are five, uh, they said that there are five recognized sources of marine pollution, land-based, sea-based, ocean dumping, atmospheric and seabed activity. You just see the picture. In 1990, uh, this picture is uh, taken in, from GSAM website. In 1990, land-based discharges is 44%, but now the land-based source of pollution is uh, occurs 80%, the global uh, ocean. In the global, global ocean, 80% is the dominant by land-based pollutants. So land-based marine pollution in Bangladesh, land-based marine pollution is also dominant like other world. So why, why land-based marine pollution is dominant? You see the some uh, priority parameters in the uh, coastal pollution. Heavy metals in Bangladesh, heavy metals is the number one ranking uh, for coastal pollution. And uh, besides nutrients, fertilizers, hydrocarbons, TSS, TDS, microbes, pops, pesticides, marine litters, are also the uh, important uh, sources uh, of coastal pollution. So what is the linkage between main environment and land-based marine pollution? Uh, if, you know, if you want to know the ocean, uh, you know the octopine, uh, the main team is know the ocean. If you want to know the ocean, you, know, you need to know the main environment or ocean environment. If you want to sustainable, if you want to see the sustainable main environment, you need the main, protect the main environment. So how you protect? If you want to protect the main environment, you need to control the marine pollution. But if you control the, but land-based marine pollution uh, is dominant in all over the world. So we need to control the land-based marine pollution for sustainable marine environment. I will uh, discuss my uh, lectures. Uh, what is the link with the land-based marine pollution and main environmental protection? Here I want to note it that the previous two lectures, you will see lots of videos and lots of photos, all are enjoying. But today I will discuss the, uh, my lecture in a theoretical basis. In, uh, because uh, in the legal, in, in the, I, I will discuss the legal analysis. So land-based marine pollution, you know this pollution comes from land. Several point and non-point sources of pollutions are the main causes of land-based marine pollution. Land-based pollutants reaches directly to the Bay of Bengal coast through different channels because Bangladesh have no any domestic waste treatment facilities and central warehouse system. So as Bangladesh has no any central uh, waste treatment facilities in city area, for this all types of pollutants come through the Bay of Bengal, come to our ocean through different channels or different rivers or drainage system. These are the uh, main sources of, uh, main components of land-based uh, pollutants. Here I want to see the, suppose you see the uh, bias uh, or, or plastic cup uh, to dissolve uh, this cup, you need, they need 50 yards. So all of the plastic materials uh, uh, and the marine liters, which are uh, need, uh, some, some need one to five years, some need one to 20 years for dissolve and some are never dissolved. So it's very important the, to control the marine pollution. So marine plastic, we are always discussing a lots of research now going about the marine plastics and marine plastics also one of the most important components of land-based marine pollution. So main litters generally originates from fishing gear, shipping waste, uh, littering or at beaches, plastic granules, uncontrolled landfills, 
and land based leaders. So Bangladesh in 2006 Department of Environment they make a national action plan uh, for uh, protection of the environment uh, from land based activities. So the key issues of land based activities in Bangladesh are then noted according to noted of Department of Environment 2006 urbanization and municipal waste are the main, main ranking one industrial waste including sheep breaking agriculture and aquaculture, coastal tourism. Uh, in Bangladesh, the, these are the main sources of land-based pollutions. Urban sewage is the ranking one, urban sewage and solid waste. So in, uh, you see that sheep breaking also are termed as land-based sources pollution. In the other world, land sheep breaking is a, uh, actually termed as shipping pollution sea based pollution but in bangladesh ship breaking pollution occur in a beaching method you know beach is a land for this in our country ship breaking pollution also termed as the land based pollutants so what is the impacts of land based marine pollution you know that land based marine pollution it is a, it has a big impacts on endangering species it's also impacts on marine biota, including plankton, mammals, fish, eggs, and larvae, seabird, benthos, etc. It creates the eutrophication or excess nutrients, which has a negative impacts on human health because uh, uh, due to the pollution, sometimes it makes a microbial pollution, which is, is the uh, impacts on the uh, human health diseases. So microbial diseases contaminations. So I, I just uh, say before, why sheep breaking pollution in Bangladesh is termed in land-based land sources due to the beaching method. Uh, I just show these pages because I have uh, published one research article regarding the issues where I analyze the impact of sheep breaking pollution. And I also discuss the uh, legal framework for preventing the sheep breaking pollution in Bangladesh. So what is the importance of land-based pollution? marine pollution control. The top five importance for Bangladesh, because land-based marine pollution is dominant, which is 70% in Bangladesh, and emergent trade due to the devastating impacts, is to develop the sustainable marine environment by implementing blue economy, we should control the land-based marine pollution. It has a land-based marine pollution has constant trade and continues to endanger the marine ecosystem, which I discussed. For achieving SDG, SDG, because in SDG 14, the, uh, below the ocean, uh, is, is discussed the below the ocean, in target 14.1 gives the priorities to prevent and production uh, reduction of land-based activities by 200, 2025. And land-based marine pollution control is important for necessities of marine environment protection and conservation. So, the next section I will discuss about the Bangladesh law system. What is the weakness of national law? As you know, what is national law? National law are the rules of law which operation within the boundaries of the country. It regulates the relation between the citizens. It regulates the relation between the citizen and the country or states. It's also a national law based on the act of parliament customary and religious practice of the people. So what is the key constraints, key challenges, key problems of land-based marine pollution control in Bangladesh? I summarize the, uh, some points because Bangladesh uh, people, some maximum, some people, about 20 to 20 percent people have been literate and they have no idea about the marine science or even marine environment or marine pollution and lacuna of uh, national legislation, that, that means the, the national legislation in our country is very old uh, and, and, and some, they have no available national legislations, national regulations for control land-based uh, marine pollution, transboundary problems, lack of exclusive ministry and department, lack of scientific research, lack of financial funding, institutional incapacity, lack of institutional coordination, conflict with sectoral policies, lack of national marine data center, 
uh, we have no available data regarding the rain pollution, non punitive approach of loss, government ownness because the economy matter. Government, if you if go, some governments sometimes take initiative to control uh, ship breaking pollution, but you know that ship breaking uh, plays a uh, very good economy, uh, have a big economy in, uh, which, which, which is uh, adding in our national economy. Sometimes this makes problems. Lack of a specific regional framework. So lots of environmental laws in working in Bangladesh, but they have no any specific section for main pollution control. We have lots of laws, environmental laws. There are no specific section. Concerning main protection from main pollution, some of the environmental laws have not been updated from the long time. It is noted that Territory Water and Maintain Zone Act 1974 is the only act who has one provisions to suggest the government in formulating comprehensive law for marine pollution control, which is the foundation of the Maritime Act in Bangladesh. There I saw some uh, laws I included, and the yellow, uh, I, the yellow sign show that there are all the marine related acts, uh, marine related policies or rules. Among them, may, in 2008, Bangladesh government um, uh, dropped uh, one act which is named is Maritime Act 2018, but this act yet not uh, coming to the light. But in this act, they have some provisions for main environmental protection. But they have no direct provisions for land-based main pollution control. So what is our limitations of our national institutions? You know, Department of Environment under Ministry of Environment Forest and Department of Shipping under Ministry of, under Ministry of Shipping are the main responsible body for environmental protection and pollution control. But the ministry and department has lacking its capacity to coordinate with other related agencies due to the environmental regulations are fragmented at the various ministry. Different ministries operate the different regulations. This is the big problems, I think. In 2006, uh, Department of Environment published National Action Plan for the Protection of Land-Based Activities, which I discussed previously, but they have no proper guideline about the legal action to control land-based main pollution. In this regard, the lecture emphasizes on the implementation of international and regional regulations to control LMP in Bangladesh. Actually, uh, you know that Bangladesh have no the national law, national and national law regarding the marine pollution control, and we have no separate agency or separate ministry uh, for uh, for monitoring the marine environmental protection. Uh, except the Department of Environment. For this, actually, I discussed the, how Bangladesh can implement the uh, national law uh, through the lessons from the international and regional regulation. For this, I will discuss the, uh, into some international regulation. What types of international law are uh, established for control of the marine pollution, including the land-based marine pollution? Generally, uh, international regulations for the protection of marine environment are established under the international conventions, rules of customary law, and some general principles law. This is the actually uh, legal words. There are lots of international management principles are working for the sustainable use of marine resources. Among them, sustainable development, ICZM, uh, EIA. ICZM is integrated coastal zone management, environmental impact assessment, and precautionary principles and, and polluter spare principle and cleaner protection. They are the global um, principles. Uh, we can also use these principles uh, for implement uh, our for implementation of our uh, uh, act, national acts. And there are some uh, global body uh, who are working for main environmental protection, including land-based marine pollution, like United Nations. United Nations Environmental Program and GSAM, I, I said, and IUC Westpac also working for controlling the marine pollution. <clears throat> Bangladesh, uh, here I see Bangladesh also signed and ratified some, uh, some international conventions and, and, uh, and some conference and some guidelines, but only Stockholm Declaration, uh, they 
implement in our national law in 2007. So to protect the land-based marine pollution, there are limited international regulations are adopted in the light of principles of customary law and general principles of law. Bangladesh has, certified, has ratified some important international legislation, but uh, yet to initiate national regimes to give effect the international commitments. For analysis of the land-based marine pollution control, uh, we will discuss in, in, in the next, next, next pages about the law of the sea and laws, United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea, which is termed as Law of the Sea Convention, a Stockholm Declaration, Montreal Guidelines, Agenda 21, and Global Program of Action, and etc. So, um, you know, all we know about the Anglos, Anglos is the United Nations Convention Law of the Sea, which is considered as the main international legal instruments for the protection and preservation of main environment. In, there are a lot, there are about more than 300 articles, among them article 192 to 206 sets for control of all sorts of marine pollution. Whereas article 207 to 222 covers particular types of marine pollution. It's very important. And Article 207 has a specific provisions for LMP control, land-based marine pollution control. And this article emphasized for enact the national laws and take necessary measures for control, which are the main aim to discuss these uh, lectures. Emphasize on enact national law. That means if you need to control land-based marine pollution, you need to Im implement national law. Article 216 and 217 emphasize to ban the all types of illegal dumping, which indirectly linked with the land-based marine pollution control because the dumping actually they mean the shipping dumping. But sometimes, like our country, Bangladesh, we are sometimes dumping our uh, land-based pollutants in the coastal area sometimes. So it's also indirectly linked to land-based marine pollution control. A Stockholm Declaration, it's a, like a conference. It recognized the uh, necessities of land-based marine pollution control for the first time. Uh, the principle six, seven, and 21 has some provisions to control land-based marine pollution indirectly. And Montreal guidelines, it's very important for controlling the land-based marine pollution. Uh, it actually, uh, these guidelines uh, provided by the UNEP United Nations Environmental Program, first internationally agreed legal documents to preserve and protect the main environment for LMP. The guideline emphasized on the international and regional cooperation, measures against the land-based main pollutions, prevent transboundary pollution, implement comprehensive environmental law, information transfer, etc. Agenda 21 also responsible to protect the main environment. Chapter 17 mainly address the uh, lack of global regulations, main environmental degradations, etc. And paragraph 17.24 to 17.29 specify the necessities of actions against land-based marine pollution. And the global program of action is implemented by the Washington Conference in 1995 which suggests to take actions by the state parties to develop comprehensive and adaptive program under integrated coastal zone management. You know that this is the principle, global principles, and to implement effective regional and international cooperation. The all law, international laws, they suggested that to implement the regional cooperation, international cooperation, and to take some adaptive program, etc. So what is our main lessons, main outcomes of this international law? From the analysis, it is found that Anglos is the only global agreement who is addressing the prevention of land-based marine pollution from marine environment. However, Bangladesh ratifies the convention in 2001, to, uh, to 2001, yes, rather enforcement. Bangladesh did not implement the law of the sea only just ratify, sign and ratify, not enforcement. The Stockholm declarations, Montreal guidelines, Agenda 21, GPA, 
etc have a specific actions to control land based mine pollution but they are all non binding in nature that means that this uh, guidelines cannot pressure any state if you want you can take the lessons from there in addition existing global arrangement is unsatisfactory because several global agreed regional agreements and protocols have has potential outcomes in regional level we see that some regional agreements is better than the international law for this we are discussing so what is the analysis and uh, the next section we analyze is the regional framework regional framework the main tools of regional framework is regional cooperation diplomatic uh, meetings partnership building political negotiation dispute settlement so bangladesh in being a member country of sarc in 1997 countries uh, they make a sarc in 1985 but sarc has failed to accomplish any significant achievements in building cooperation in such a serious issue like mine pollution so it is noted that there are no any existing specific regional regulations to control land based mine pollution in the bay bengal region rather some regional regulatory instruments in this regard this lecture discuss the sub regional problems in the bay bengal region to find out the lack of major issues actually bangladesh have no in the bay bengal there are no any regional agreements so for this actually we discussed uh, the what is the actually problem why we have no any regional agreement because there are the main problem is the scientific economic and transboundary scientific problem is the data collection source identification and damage determination of land based sources are the main ele elements of scientific problems industrial production versus main environmental pollution they make a conflict always they make a conflict issue there are also the main elements of economic problem and types of contaminants regional consensus and social priorities are the main factors for transboundary problem due to the that types of problems the in the bay of bengal region and uh, the boblimi countries they cannot make any regional framework to control the marine pollution including land based marine pollution but we have some regional uh, activities um, uh, but uh, these are uh, these are uh, only for ma marine sector but these are not uh, uh, for the uh, marine pollution control we have some uh, these are working for on the main environmental protection in a different way suppose bay of bengal program in 1979 south asia cooperative environmental program sasep 1992 colombo workshop 1997 boblimi to uh, boblimi 2009 bay of bengal last main negotiation 2009 they are working uh, for actually uh, some uh, how to protect the main environment but they have no direct uh, uh, any uh, any section or any uh, regulations for control land based mine pollution in the south asia there are three non binding actions plan under unep that target to main pollution control in directly these are action plan for protection and management of main and coastal environment of south asian seas it was emphasized on 1974 regional oil and chemical main pollution contingency plan for south asia 1995 road map of regional cooperation on coastal and marine risk mitigation plan for south asia 2009 i just show this lectures for uh, for learning actually but this uh, extends is not uh, uh, for marine pollution control but there are some successful global activities global convention global regulations like a helsinki convention the paris convention barcelona convention ospar convention the, this convention are very effective for uh, for controlling the land based marine pollution and very popular in worldwide and there are also some examples of regional sea programs because uh, in globally 14 regional seas program are adopt uh, for uh, solve their common environmental issues through joint coordinated activities among them athens protocol Kyoto Protocol, Kuwait Protocol, Bucharest Protocol, Aruba Protocol. 
this protocol also very important. They also suggest how to implement the regional cooperation for controlling land-based marine pollution. Bangladesh can take the lessons from the regional uh, such types of regional seas program, regional convention, etc. So, how Bangladesh can implement uh, the um, regional and international uh, uh, regulations for control land-based pollution? So, lessons from international regional regulations. As I mentioned, Bangladesh has various constraints, including lots of limitations for LMP control. So, it is argued that there are some possibilities and necessities to enact national law by taking lessons from international and regional regulation. As Bangladesh has no national law, so Bangladesh uh, can take the lessons, some successful lessons from international law, can take some lessons from regional law because there are some regional framework, success regional uh, framework in globally, which I discussed. So from the discussion, it is found that International cooperation, management principles, you know, the five, six global management principles, regional framework, capacity building framework, technology transfer, public participation and awareness, etc., can be the best tools for implementation of domestic legal framework in Bangladesh. We can, uh, as I have completed my PhD from China, so we can take some. Uh, um, lessons from Chinese example, because China have a integrated main environmental protection law and where uh, the, they have regulates the five major uh, sources of marine pollution, uh, including the land-based pollutants. In chapter four of this regulation, marine environment protection law in 1982, they adopt, they have in chapter four of this uh, act, has strict provisions to control and reduction of land-based marine pollution. So Bangladesh can follow the Chinese law also, how, how China uh, control the pollution, marine pollution. In 1984, China also adopted the prevention and control of water pollution from land-based activities, which also has some provisions for prevention of water pollution from land-based pollutants. So, in presently, the some popular model also uh, implement by some uh, countries. Among them, three R model: reduce, reuse, and recycle model is very popular. Uh, Bangladesh can also uh, 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 try to control the land-based marine pollution by three R model. Three R model. Besides. The garbage buying model is also in, uh, also very famous in China uh, and some other countries also uh, use this model that people uh, people collect the uh, uh, garbage uh, from house or uh, uh, from road or from drain and they sell this recyclable recyclable uh, recyclable uh, materials uh, to the uh, local government. Local government buy this uh, buy these garbages, and people are very interested because uh, because they get got the money. They get they get money by selling the garbage. So Bangladesh can took this uh, uh, lessons also. So the finally lessons from the internal regulations. Finally, we found that how we can implement our national act. We should implement the international framework. We should develop the regional framework. We should ensuring the ensuring the capacity building framework. We can enforceable transboundary framework, initiating technology transfer, establishing uh, establishing uh, financial integration, and increasing the public participation and recharge. By accumulate these types of uh, initiative, uh, I think Bangladesh uh, can uh, implement the national law for controlling land-based marine pollution. So among the discussion, I just uh, uh, make a framework uh, for the, my country, and I make one published one research article regarding this issue in mean, last year, 2019, where I proposed the uh, framework emphasized on flowing recommendation. The discharge 
of land based pollutants should be strictly treated by central waste treatment plant. Bangladesh yet have, has not any central waste treatment plant in any city. Medical waste, domestic garbage, industrial sewage, etc., should be strictly treated before discharge into the sea. The city corporation or local government in the coastal areas should construct a better drainage system and sewage disposal projects. In the rivers and strain areas, strictly control the discharge of wastewater. The discharge of chemical wastewater should take effective measures to protect the main resources. Some global principles like precautionary principles, polluter spray principles should need implement. In addition, in addition, garbage buying model can implement in any city area uh, because it is popular in some regions of the world. I just published one article in last year in 2019 where I proposed a framework how to control the land-based marine pollution. And I emphasize the uh, uh, Ministry of uh, uh, separate, uh, proposed the separate main environmental protection cell under the Department of Environment. So among the lecture, I just give some concluding remarks. For the overall protection of main pollution, Bangladesh has undertaken some national initiatives, but ratifies some international laws rather enforcement. The country can implement those international instruments for protecting main and coastal environment from adverse impacts of uh, land-based main pollution. And existing regional uh, framework should consider to evaluate the weakness of regional approach for implement comprehensive regional regulations in this region. Taking into consideration of the strength and weakness of those laws, Bangladesh needs to enact comprehensive National Act for Land Basement Pollution Control. From this, to this lecture, I want to implement, I want to suggest the government to enact, to implement a comprehensive National Act for Land Basement Pollution Control. I finished my lecture by, uh, says by, uh, by one comments of my uh, teacher, very popular teacher about environmentalist, Edmund Hillary says, Environmental problems are real social problems. It begins with people as the causes and it ends with the people as victims. Thank you all. And I want this types of country. This is the beautiful Bangladesh. This is our, uh, I, I, I think if we control the land-based marine pollution and our uh, environment, our marine environment will be, seems like this blue. Thank you. Well, sir, uh, stop the screen sharing. I'm stopping the screen sharing. Well, sir, uh, stop the screen sharing, please. Close, just close. Yes, uh, stop. Stop video. Sorry, yeah, I stop share. It's okay. Yes, uh, that's okay. Thanks a lot, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Wahidul Alam, for such a lively and informative session. Welcome to the portion assessment session. I am MD Jahin Khondokar from Octopin, a platform for the students who are uh, very much. Uh, aware about the, uh, about the ocean and uh, are trying to aware people about ocean by educating them about this ocean. Well, uh, we have some questions. Um, now I'm going to read these questions. Uh, Well, uh, our first question is from Lucas Vega. Uh, she is asking, how was the step to build the law of land-based marine pollution? Sorry, please. Again. Uh, our first question is from Lucas Vega. She is asking, how was the step to build the law of land-based marine pollution? Yeah. Step to build 
the law actually uh, you have uh, already showed us the steps of building the laws for land based marine pollution oh, okay i just uh, i i understand thank you for nice question actually actually this is our uh, main outcomes how we can uh, build a, a law for land based marine pollution in some countries uh, including the uh, i saw i saw i saw that china usa japan korea they have the separate uh, law for land national law for land based marine pollution control but it's uh, it's needs uh, actually uh, prop, uh, a big funding because if you implement the uh, before implement the national law you need a central waste treatment plan and, and so in all cities so for this actually i suggest in my uh, proposed framework to build up a central waste treatment central warehouse system uh, 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 before, first then if you have a central waste treatment plan if you have a, a, a provided the uh, everything uh, for the nation then the then the people then the people of the country uh, can uh, can uh, can abide the rules can abide by the rules otherwise we have you have we have a limitation you have you have a, a limitations for um, proper uh, for, for, for proper uh, facilities you cannot make laws you cannot make laws but if you want to make a national law uh, you need you can take the lessons from some regional uh, established regional framework they have some in law of the sea in section 11 they have a uh, how to you can how, how you for one country can implement marine uh, main pollution control or land based main pollution control article 207 you can follow well the next question is from tofik uh, he is asking about marine litters pollution and uh, plastics. He is asking that marine litters and plastic are the same or not. Oh, actually, marine litters and uh, plastics are not same. Uh, marine litters can be plastic, but uh, uh, they are not actually same. Not actually same, yes. Marine litters, uh, actually, uh, the plastic materials is also a, uh, one of the components of the marine litters. And marine litters, maybe rope, maybe net. In also, uh, uh, I, I saw I saw one pictures that lot of uh, lot of things. There all are marine litters. Whereas plastic also one of the components of the marine litters. Well, next question is from Partho Bonik. He is uh, saying that microplastic pollution is now a very hot topic. Yes, we know that. Uh, several research have under studies. Sir, I want to know about the prospects of degradation procedure of these microplastics in marine environment. Oh, very nice question. And, and actually, researchers are doing the, uh, the present researchers, the global researchers are doing the charts how to, uh, how to control the, uh, how, to dissolve, how to control the plastic pollution, including the microplastic. Actually, microplastics uh, occurs from the plastic. If we stop the uh, uh, dumping, if we stop the plastic dumping, if we stop the land-based uh, pollutants dumping, I think our ocean will be will be improved day by day. So before uh, controlling the before um, uh, controlling the microplastic pollution, we need to stop the. Uh, all types of uh, dumping, all types of dumping should be banned in the ocean. Well, the next question is from Mahmudul Hassan. Uh, he is asking, uh, what type of specific ministry is required for marine pollution? Good. Actually, this is my uh, also main team. In some countries, suppose the uh, India, India have a uh, ministry of art sciences in china have a ministry of natural resources so uh, even in usa they have a strong agency environmental protection agency which is termed as epa so but in bangladesh we have no any specific agencies we have no any specific department of environment and uh, doing the uh, monitoring the marine pollution but they have no sufficient data 
they have no uh, separate uh, agency uh, uh, they have no separate uh, hands uh, who are who are responsible for marine and bird protection marine pollution control or land based marine pollution control but uh, in few in uh, after the ocean delimitation the under the ministry of foreign affairs we have a one unit marine affairs unit but they are working with the uh, blue economy uh, where is the main environment protection also a component maybe but i want that uh, we want that bangladesh should need a separate ministry because our maritime area is very similar to our land area if the land area have 30 ministry so why we, we, we not establish the separate ministry for our ocean for our researchers. Yes. Uh, then he. Uh, then again, a question from Mahmoudul Hassan. He is asking, can we utilize the UNCLOS 1982 for the control of marine pollution in case of foreign ships? Yeah, we can. We can. But Bangladesh, I, I just showed that. UN CLOs and United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea, which is common name, name is Law of the Sea. Bangladesh ratified this uh, Anglos in 2001, 2001, but not enforcement, not yet implement. For this, uh, um, we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, before enforcement, we, we cannot do this. But Bangladesh ratified in the when you the you know that there is some maritime zone in high seas uh, or in a ter territorial water, uh, uh, we have some uh, offshore water. So maritime, maritime zone uh, in in maritime zone we have some uh, laws. Uh, we have some global laws, but in case of the Bangladesh territory, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, do this. Uh, because we are not enforcement the laws yet, we just only ratified. We just followed. We just signed. Well, the next question is from from Fatima Zaim. She is asking: Is UNCLO valid for the high seas? Sorry, she is asking about UNCLO is valid for the high seas. Yes. Yes, Anglos is valid for high seas because high seas is the common heritage. Every nation, every nation can uh, use the high sea because you know some uh, in uh, Anglos is uh, uh, Anglos is the um, global act of United Nations. So United Nations, uh, uh, some countries of United Nations, they have no ocean area. So they said how. Uh, so we should how I, we can use the ocean. We have no coastal area. For this, the high seas is for all, and uh, high seas can is the common heritage. It's called the common heritage. If all countries can use the high seas, but all countries cannot use the territory water, territory sea, etc. Without before permission. Well, uh, next, Mr. Rakibul Hassan, he is asking us, uh, he is wanting to know about the microplastics. About the microplastics. He wants to know about the microplastics? Yes. Microplastic is a very a small uh, we say actually you cannot see the see by eyes like a bacteria like a bacteria this is the components from the plastic material because you know that people are dumping the plastic materials into the ocean and the, this plastic material some plastic materials need to dissolve 50 years 60 years 100 years and when the, but they are not fully dissolved but they are scattered they are broken and scattered by uh, scattered, and they are actually very small sizes. Uh, we, we say that very small sizes you cannot see uh, by eyes, uh, but the, these are the actually we termed as microplastic. Well, uh, next question is from 0516. I don't know his or her name. Uh, he is uh, asking, How can we remove microplastics from Bay of Bengal? 
it's very tough <laughs> question actually uh, <clears throat> it is not easy to to control the microplastic but if we control uh, if we control the pollution day by day if if all country not only bangladesh in all coastal country can uh, reduce the uh, pollution can control the marine pollution can co if, if control the land based pollution then we think that day by day our ocean will be improved but it is not easy to control the microplastic within days within months within year because we polluted our ocean from thousand from thousand years to thousand years it's not easy uh the last question from godwin is asking that uh, what are the preventive methods if shipwreck happened and huge oil spills can damage the marine life can you please explain more about shipwrecking actually it's a huge topic you are asking and uh, sir please uh, answer this in a short uh, in a short situation or in short speech <clears throat> he is asking to know about ship breaking yeah or oil spills you know that the except bangladesh india pakistan and egypt only four to five countries uh, are doing the ship breaking activities and the other global world uh, they are not do this they are actually totally banned ship breaking activities totally banned in other world bangladesh is the number one from uh, number uh, one countries who are uh, actually last two years bangladesh is number one that uh, in, in regarding the ship breaking because due to the ship breaking uh, is a one of the important economic uh, uh, economic uh, sectors uh, whose uh, who is who is adding in our national economy but uh, it's actually have a hazardous impact everybody knows ship breaking have a, have a hazardous works has hazardous impacts to our marine life uh, and and our resources and bangladesh government also initiate bangladesh government has to uh, implement a ship breaking law uh, for uh, for control the hazardous impact but the ship breaking association they are more strong they make a read against the ship breaking law and now this law is stopped for this the ship breaking pollution is continuing so from my uh, from my end uh, i i think that we should control the ship breaking pollution we should uh, we should give the emphasis because lots of the, if you bangladesh is now Uh, grow, grow, growing fast in economy and now mid income country so we should uh, for achieving the sdg so we should control the uh, ship breaking pollution we should con we should ban the ship breaking activities i think well we are at the ending of our session our live session we have some other questions uh, but we will reply this questions with the soft copy of this lecture uh many of them are asking us to know about the soft copies yes we will uh give you the soft copies so don't worry we'll provide the soft copy from octofin uh please stay with us thank you everyone for uh, staying with us thank you mr uh dr wahidul alam sir for your informative lecture and uh, staying with the octofin you are an uh, very much honorable and uh, advisory one for our our octofin team and uh, that's why we are very much pleasure to have you with us well thank you goodbye everyone goodbye sir thank goodbye maksuda khanum and uh, goodbye to all our participants thank you all